Babes, a new film that just premiered at South by Southwest, is about a single woman who, after a one-night stand, gets mm -hmm. pregnant and then decides to keep the baby with the help and consultation of her best friend, a ma married mother of two. Who just had her baby for the first, like, the <laughs> opening of the movie is her having her baby. Her second And baby. then we get to the premise of, yeah. yeah. Uh, Alana Glazer is the f single mom, or the... Soon to, Soon be, to mom, be the single mom, yeah. yeah. The Michelle, Michelle Bateau, Bateau plays her mo her friend. Uh, I'm yeah, her friend who's up. got the two kids already, and uh, this is the directorial feature film debut from Pamela Adlin, who has done a whopping no other movies, but she did have <laughs> better uh, things. The better things, which I, was that a spinoff from the Louis C.K. I, it wasn't. Or was but it, it just like a, an off branch after yeah. Louis? Uh, I think it was like after season two success of gotcha. Louis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've seen segments from that show. Obviously, uh, Pamela Adlin and the Adlins have been everywhere. If you've seen her daughters in several movies, you may not even know that they're a whole like family that's out there. Yeah. And I always forget that she's freaking Bobby, Bobby from, Hill. <laughs> from the voice. King of the Hill. She, comes out with, she came out with her Bobby socks and I was already laughing from the beginning of it. And I, I think it's a really solid movie. I think it's mm -hmm. very funny. Um, and it's given me the Alana Glazer I've been wanting. Yes. For a while since Broad City ended, but it's not the funniest Michelle Bateau has been. Okay, okay. Well, so, so at. at least with Alana Glazer, I think she's sort of been a bit wayward, it feels After, like, since yeah. Broad City. It's like, what's the next step? What's the next evolution? Stand up's been okay. She's done yeah. some horror, which will tie in. Yeah. And, like, obviously, personally, she's yeah. become a mom, and she that, has, which that's is, like, affected a lot of her cool. material. This feels like it's that energy put in the right direction. She's a co writer yes. on this script as All for well. It. That makes a lot of sense. And she, I think it really is the, sort of like that, that Broad City style looseness, the sort of like, optimism and enthusiasm in the face of adversity you know she, yeah. she the way that she can sort of like look at a bad situation and be like okay yes yeah. you know that is sort of charming and funny here we're big alana fans too yeah i'm gonna I mean, ask she, you it's good do you think the writing is like she sat down and wrote or <laughs> the camera was rolling <laughs> and she just said a lot of things and they're like okay yeah you're a writer now i mean i think she's it's her i accept either i, I think way. she actually yeah. wrote this script okay yeah so, um she's a co-writer on it as well she but. is definitely more of a lead than Michelle is. Yes, and, and, it's her movie. And it's not that I wouldn't call Michelle a co-lead, though, because mm -hmm. I still think she's a co-lead. She's, she's crawling on the floor. And she has scenes by herself as well. Yeah. But there are moments where, in the frame, Michelle will be the side. And it is Alana. What feels like, you know, freestyling, ad-libbing a bit. And for me, they work 75% of the time because I'm a big fan of her. Yeah. For others, they may get <laughs> a little tired if you're not a Brad City fan. Yeah. Because this does feel like a successor. If to you that. have any familiar familiarity with what Alana Glazer's like comedy project is. Walking around New York. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> and babbling, yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of know the vibe you're going to get yeah. into here. It just like, it's effective. I think there's like a, a raunchiness that's really like fun in the way that like Bridesmaids mm -hmm. worked for me. This has a bit of a, the no, Apatopian feel yeah, yeah. because like, like a lot of those appetite movies, it's like reacting to something and then, well, here's another punchline for that. Oh, here's another yeah. punchline for that. The, yes. the building punchlines uh, thing yeah. that they do. Uh, but I think just most of it hits in... Um, you know, I think there's a tendency with with movies that are about pregnancy, with their, that are about becoming a mother, that I find them to often be a bit too treacly, a bit too sentimental okay. about these things. Where it's like, like I get, you know, new life is precious or whatever, but yeah. I, I think this is a movie that really like tries to undercut that. Oh, whenever I think they do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> After they have the baby, there's no joy. The biggest joy they find is smelling the placenta. I think. Yeah. And they're like the beauty of it. Everything else is hell when it comes to raising these kids. Yeah. That is refreshing. I think mm -hmm. that's what more parenting stuff needs is reminding you like it's going to be hell sometimes. They're going to be tired. These mm -hmm. two are no longer the, the joyful couple that they used to be. And I, I found the, the rawness of that to be a lot better. And that's what you were mentioning. Uh, both of them having kids have decided to, you know, make their own series. I highly recommend Michelle Bouteau's uh, series on Netflix. I'm, I'm blinking on the net. survival of the thickest. Thickest, yeah. Sounds about right. Um but Alana, you know, the, the different projects that she had taken was completely different from the Alana we know her as. And it's not even to box her in. I gave her the chance in that horror movie, which was called False Positive. False Positive. Yeah, not the best. Woo, that was just uh, a terrible ripoff of Rosemary's, Rosemary's Baby. Baby. And I'm, I'm okay with you homaging Rosemary's Baby. There's that uh, the baby on, on HBO. Mm. That's an homage to it. It's just it wasn't in the wheelhouse and it did not understand what made Rosemary's Baby good. Yeah. Ironically... This is a better Rosemary's Baby. This is a better experience of her pregnancy and the horrors of yeah, it in yeah. a comedy 
than what she was doing over there in False Positive. And I'm so happy that she took another crack at it because this is what she has to say about motherhood. And I think that's raw. Absolutely. Not what was going on in the other movie. Definitely. Uh, we talked a lot about Alana and Michelle so far, who are both excellent and really, really? funny opposite each other. Michelle, like, kind of... kind of Honestly, right? Yeah, like, she is just as, like, fluid with... When they're not together. ...as Abby Jacobson yeah. was for a lot of years. Although Michelle's whole, like persona is a bit like broader and sillier than I think Abby's which is a little bit more like me yeah yeah yeah. which you know it's almost not exactly but it's almost like two Alanas in the situation a little bit yeah which makes it really fun Um, but besides how fun both of them are I think this movie's really aided by a pretty excellent ensemble cast around them Uh, Hassan Minaj has moments uh, as uh, Michelle Bateau's husband Mm -hmm. I really loved John Carroll Lynch as the gynecologist the the Zodiac killer himself I thought (laughs) very very funny and has his own small arc Um, you even have a a moment with Oliver Platt that That brings some of the like best drama from the film you know he's such a great actor he kind of shows up and immediately you you get a sense of who that person is he came in for one day killed it Mm -hmm. but that's what you would expect obviously Um, there are twins in this movie I'm not going to say who they or if you can I thought that they had one of the funniest scenes they were great and Stephen James Underrated guy. Underrated guy. And he came in here and it just brings this spark to the movie where you you are within the same genre, but it's a romantic comedy. Yeah. And then it's a buddy comedy. And it's staying all within comedies, but it does a great job jumping around. Mm-hmm. Not different tones, but the, the different realms of, uh, again, what what could be romance, what could be uh, awkward cringe comedy. like you, I don't know what you would call bridesmaids in particular. Yeah. But it never crosses that line where it feels too crazy. Because as they mentioned, a lot of the stupid stuff they do in the movie, they like name trap friends who it's happened to. They talked about stuff that's happened to them. And there's a through line in the movie, two, two in particular, where they're mentioning you things that you never hear about. During labor, right? Um, how long it takes, uh, stuff with the placenta, yeah. uh, and then another one in you getting checked and 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 leading up to those appointments about you know whatever ethnicity you are, you have to go get checked for certain diseases, yeah. and they're like, it seems kind of racist, but <laughs> genetics are racist, <laughs> or I think they say genetics are racist, yeah, um, because that is what they do attack, and and uh, I, I found that that was a very interesting way to approach like the things they wanted to say within the comedy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's a lot of like actual reflections on the experience of motherhood yeah. and stuff like that uh, that are I think are going to be relatable for people. You know, ultimately it just comes down to like w- comedy is a really personal thing and sometimes yeah. you find a thing funny or you don't find a thing funny. I'd say I found like at least 75% of this movie pretty funny mm-hmm. and, and that's like a really solid success rate for a yeah. comedy for me. Same. I, I really enjoyed my time with this one. I think this is one of the best movies I saw here. I yeah. gave it 3.5 but I'm also I'm, harsh. You are pretty harsh but I, I'm on the same one. Uh, I'm at the same uh, yeah. level with it for you, but I think your 3.5 is probably higher than mine, <laughs> Maybe. for sure. Um, but I, I still thought it was pretty good. I think it's getting released by... Do we even know? Ooh, That's a great question. I'll have to search that, that up. But they they haven't given a date, as far as I'm aware. Um, yeah, at least from the beginning. This is one of the big headliners that hasn't been picked up by anybody, but I assume that you make this for Mother's Day and you got yourself a, at yeah. least a decent amount of a hit because it's not older mothers. It's not, it's literally just young mothers and it's not mothers with their kids. It's mothers with other mothers. Mm -hmm. That's a really good uh, perspective for the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that this is going to be a really, uh, broadly appealing movie. Bridesmaids for moms. Yeah. There there we go. That's That's the the tagline for us. Yeah, I think people are going to really enjoy this one. I hope people find it as funny as we did. Yeah, um, it's a good time, and I'm it's a good time at theater. Definitely. 